Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Money with Min. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. But either way, remember to subscribe. And as always, I truly appreciate the support. So if you're tuning into this video, you probably have some questions about getting paid in stock. So in this quick video, let's talk about two things. Number one, what does getting paid in stock look like? And number two, what you should do with that stock. So in the modern day, in the last decade or so, it's pretty common that several companies will often pay you in stock in form of your compensation. The range and value of your stock might vary wildly depending on your position, your role, and the company you're at, but it often falls into a few different buckets. I won't go into too much detail about each one, but RSUs and PSUs are some of the more common ways to get compensated today. And I know for many of you, this might be the first time you're getting stock and learning about stocks. It might feel a little bit intimidating, but trust me, this is simple, this is easy, and it's worth your time to understand. So let's first talk about RSUs, which are also known as restricted stock units. And you can think about this as additional form of money on top of your compensation in the form of stock that materializes over the course of time. And the restriction on these RSUs is often measured in the amount of time it takes these shares to vest to become full stock that you can actually capitalize on. So let's look at a practical example. Let's say you started a company and part of your compensation package is 100 RSUs of the company's shares that vest over four years. And for the sake of simplicity, let's say the vesting schedule is evened out over the course of those four years. So what that means is at the end of the first year, you get 25 shares. Then at the end of the second year, another 25. Third year, another 25. And by the end of the fourth year, the full 100 shares you were promised as part of your compensation. The main reason companies do this is because they want you to stick around for four years so you can get the full value of your RSU shares. And something to keep an eye out for here is vesting schedules itself. Some companies will have vesting schedules that are front loaded, meaning that you get a lot of your shares up front. And some companies will be evened out in the example that I just explained. And sometimes that vesting schedule can be pretty immediate specifically in the times when you're getting your bonus paid out in stock. And to quickly cover PSUs or performance shares, the key to the difference is the name itself, performance. Not only do these PSUs vest based upon a time schedule, but they vest based upon the company's performance or your own individual performance. So PSUs only achieve their full value if all these criteria are met. So now comes the second question. You now have some shares within your company. What should you do with this stock? And like the answer to many other things in personal finance and investing, it really depends upon your situation. The most straightforward situation is that you need the cash for another purchase, maybe a down payment, a house, a new car, the kid's college fund. You will want to be able to sell these stocks and these RSUs for liquid cash. So once these RSUs fully vest, you're free to sell the stock for full cash and use it for whatever you want instead. The other option is to hold on to these RSUs as full stock and full shares in your company and let the value of that stock grow over time. Now, if you believe in the success of your company and the growth of your company, either in the short, mid or long term, it might be wise to keep some of your shares in stock. Now, there's many other things to consider here, but there's two things I want to point out. The first being the tax implications on that money. So if you do hold on to that stock, I want to make sure you know about either short term gains or long term capital gains. Ideally, you would want to be holding on to the stock longer than a year so you can take advantage of long term capital gains, which is a much lower tax rate. So for instance, if you hold on to the stock for longer than a year, you get much more advantageous taxes on that growth. However, depending on that situation, if you sell it under a year, it's often considered income. So you're going to pay income tax, which is a much higher rate. The second point to holding onto your stock is overall diversification or portfolio. So what I mean by this is if your entire compensation is coming from the same company, a lot of your stock portfolio is in the same company and you're holding a lot of shares in that company, if something goes wrong there, you're in for a world of hurt. So if you're not fully diversified in your portfolio and investment, what I would suggest is consider taking some of that stock or maybe all of that company's stock selling it and investing it in other assets, other companies, other ETFs, just so you keep yourself diversified and keeping your risk low. But if you're relatively diversified anyway, and you're bullish on your company, and you would invest in your company regardless if you're an employee or not, then maybe you consider keeping your stock long term. So that does it for this quick video about getting paid in stock. If you learned something today, please drop a like down below and let me know if you have any additional questions. And if you want to see more content like this on how to get wiser with your money, definitely consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.